Hello everyone, Stephen Cassano from Taizen Shakuhachi. Um, today I'm going to do another session called Notes from Japan. And again, these are notes that I took while I was uh, living in Japan and studying with my uh, sensei, Ishikawa Toshimitsu. So today this is going to be a lesson I had on October 19th in 1999. This is lesson number two. So one of the first things uh, we discussed in the lesson was I need to uh, two things. I need to find the center of my tone and to find the center of the instrument. So what he discussed was that if I lose my center, um, I'll lose my sound. So you have to make sure that you're lined up really, really well with your instrument. And what I find with my students is as they're playing, the instrument starts to turn either direction and then all of a sudden the sound is um, uh, lost or it's more fuzzy or uh, something like that. So what I highly suggest is when you're first starting out, practice in front of a mirror and just make sure your alignment is really, really um, uh, well. Now the other thing that you'll find is everyone's different. So when I blow on my instrument, it my the, the, the aperture in the lips is slightly to the side. So my alignment may not be perfectly straight. It might be over over from one side to the other side. So you have to you know this is part of the process. You have to experiment and see where where you line up. Now ideally it should be right in the middle, but off slightly off is okay too as long as it's lining up with the uh, where the hole is in your lips as you're, as you're playing the flute. All right, so what you want is uh, finding the center of the tone is, again, it's not pushing, it's just capturing that center. So if I just go from uh, D down to uh, Ro, I'm trying to capture the center of each tone. What you don't want to hear is this really fuzzy. And again, I'm not pushing. I'm trying to open up a little bit more and I'm kept capturing the, that center, or that, that tonal center for each note. Now, according to your instrument, you're gonna have to make subtle adjustments with the, the lip to find that center. So it's not just like you blow and then you're good to go and you can move your fingers up and down. There's always subtle adjustments you need to make uh, depending on the instrument that you're playing. Now, there are instruments that will have notes that are just, uh, certain notes are just weak. And that's not necessarily the player's fault, it's just the instrument's slightly uh, unbalanced. Um, you know, especially when you're playing one of the older instruments, that's okay. Um, you could still find that center, but that center might be just a little bit softer than the other notes. So um, just kind of go with the flow with the instrument that you have, but do try to capture um, the best, roundest sound you could possibly get, no matter what instrument that you have but you want to do this in a really, really relaxed way. So it's not pushing hard. Um, so try, you don't have to overblow, just open up and relax and try and catch that center. And then go to the mirror and just double check your alignment with the instrument too. Um, yeah, so he, he mentioned that I was losing my center and that's why my sound was cutting out um, as, as I was playing. Uh, the next comment he makes is my many notes are not low enough. And again, this is the, what I'm discussing is through the lineage of Yokoyama Katsuya, where pitch was super duper important. Um, so if you're going to study the style of Yokoyama Katsuya, uh, no matter what uh, teacher you're with and what branch, but um, the pitch is super duper important and that was always stressed. Um, one time I had the opportunity to go to a workshop in Bisei, Japan, and I was watching, I was able to sneak into the hall and I was watching um, Kakuzukai Furia 
and Matama senseis rehearsing and Yokoyama was in the audience critiquing them. And boy, if anyone got out of pitch, he, he actually would, he got a little bit angry. <laughs> so it was very serious. Um, and that was really one of the things um, that he stressed highly. And to him, that was part of the shugo, that was part of the training, was being able to listen for that pitch and capture the spirit. You know, each note had significance. Why is that note medi like that? So there was a certain significance and depth to what he was teaching, and the pitch was a big, big part of that. Um, so that's something we'll discuss further as I go through these, these lessons. The next thing he talks about was uh, Medicati. And again, in this style, it might be different with other teachers. So, you know, you do what your teacher is telling you to do. But in this style with Yoko and Makatsuya, um, when you go Medicati, it was from side to side, not up and down. So if I go Medi, I'm going to be dropping to my right side. If I go Kati, I'm going to go up and to the left. That was the way he taught Medi and uh, Kadi. All right, so that's basically it for this lesson. Um, again, just to review, first, check yourself in the mirror and work on your alignment with the instrument. As you're practicing, make sure you're not twisting. So that might be one of the reasons if you happen to be losing your sound as you're playing, you might actually be subtly twisting the instrument. And also keep in mind, one of the reasons why you might be twisting the instrument as you're playing is you could, you're too tight. So make sure you're not grasping on for dear life to your instrument. Make sure their instrument is just kind of resting on your thumb and you're just enough pressure on the hole to make sure the hole is covered. Do not press hard. And that's one of the things that when you're first starting out where you were tend to grasp for dear life. And um, so just make sure you're relaxing as much as possible. Just enough pressure to make sure the hole's fully closed, nothing more, okay? Um, because if you are tight, that could be affecting your alignment and it could be making you lose your sound. Um, try to capture the, the, the center of each tone. Again, do the best you can with the instrument that you have. Um, to review some instruments, some of the notes might be a little bit weaker than the others. Um, but still, you have to try to capture that. And if that means that note can't be played as loud, that's okay, just still see if you could capture that, that center of the tone as best you can. So you want a nice, open, full sound, but without pushing. And then the last thing was when we're going Medi Kati, and again, this is unique to Yokoyama Katsuya, we would go down to the right for Medi and up to the left for Kati. So if you're studying Yokoyama style, um, that would be the general movement. And the last but not least, and one of the most important things for Yokoyama was not just the sound, but also the pitch. So that's super duper important. And as you're playing your home kyoku, if you're doing any of the Yokoyama style pieces, practicing with uh, pitch equivalence is gonna be super important. Also listening a lot. You know, listen as often as you can to Yokoyama since they're playing these pieces. And um, it's, it's pretty amazing that the, the quality and the color he could get uh, on the flute. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you find this useful. And I'll see you on the next installment of Notes from Japan. Ciao.